First thing we're going to do is, uh, which I've already got the intakes done, is take the 30 degree top cut and just widen it out so I can see what I'm doing. Okay, as you can see, that widened out the seat a little bit on the top, getting ready to enlarge it for the 160 valve. And I'm going to do all them first, do all the 30s, and then I'm going to come back and hit the 60s and pull it up, and I'll show you how I do it. All right? The first, first part is the 60 degree angle. This is the one that does the most damage, is it does the the digging, if you will, to enlarge it for the bigger valve and sets the line between the 30 degree and the 60. this what we do is we take a valve which I've marked with um, a black sharpie and we just bounce it and pull the valve up and look at the position at where the two lines intersect I'm going to try to zoom you in there so you can see this Okay, it's still a touch to the high side. It's a little bit high. <clears throat> I'm trying to move that line on down near the bottom. So what we're going to do is I'm going to face off on this a little bit, and we're going to dig just a little bit more. Okay, let's see what we got. do bounce a little bit when you really get the guides in perfectly straight and true that's what you get all right all right now that's what I'm looking for right there let me try to zoom in and get you a look on it it's right now about ten thousandths or so from the very edge of the valve Okay, that's what I'm looking for. So the 60 and 30, I did the 31st, then the 60, comes to a point. That's the point that you mark on the valve. And what that does is that places the seat in the position that you see. Let me show you what the bowl looks like. Okay, now, I'm trying to get, all right, there we go. You can see where this angle is, is right around here. Now, I think I can look at this light and point it out right there. There's where the, the 30 is the top, and then the rest of it's 60 all the way down. So right there is going to be your 60 and 30 interface. All right, and then, of course, I think I can show you right there where the end of the screwdriver is. So, I'm going to have a little bit of 30, which that's all I want, and then i got to go back in here and reset this area. I'm going to have to go in, in order to do this right and give this man the maximum dollar for uh, power for a dollar spent. After I do the valve job, i got to go in here with this tool that goes in here and sets the depth and cuts the bowl area, and i got to go back in here and report these bowls one more damn time. But you know what? It's, 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 it's attention to detail and going this extra mile that we're going to that gets every bit of power out of this thing that you can get, which you just can't buy a pair of heads like this out of the box. You just can't do it. Now, times when you're digging, and this is what takes all the time. Now, I just did the 60 on this one and 30, but when I hit it on the valve, what happened is it was too far down the edge. So what I'm going to do is go back with a 30 top cut and just kiss it some to bring it back down. 
this is what gets into your time right here sometimes it can take hours because it's just that right touch that's going to put this uh, line exactly in the position and also make it circular true around the valve all right that right there did it it was real far the edge now it's a little bit more I might need to actually <laughs> touch it back with a 60 just a little bit like I said that's what eats away into your time so much uh, because getting it absolutely perfect is the key to the game And then, of course, you got to remark your valves with the dock them and go through that. But I just thought I'd show you when you're doing a real three angle valve job, it can take up to three hours with the stones. The new machines like the Surdy and the carbide cutters, it uses one cutter that makes swoops around. The downside of that is concentricity because it don't have three ends cutting at all the same dimension it won't make it absolutely true. While the stone takes a lot more time, it does make for a truer valve job on the seat. Okay, the 60s and 30s are done on both heads. Now, you just uh, you take your dockum and you go around all the holes because this is going to be your final print the 45 stone is actually the face that touches the valve <laughs> and about 90% of the time it's all the machine shops do they'll take a 45 stone and buzz it really big and drop the valve in there for a seat and I cannot tell you how incorrect that that is because the problem is with the real wide seat carbon will get up underneath it the valve job won't last long so anyway, I'll show you how uh, precise you have to get now because this is where it gets tricky because you can't barely let it touch it. A little pressure because you don't want a wide seat width. Now we go in here and we do always have the spring and we're just going to lightly tap. And that tells us right there how round the seat is. Let me get you a better shot. All right, there's our seat right there. Now, notice it's just a touch wider over here than over here. That tells us there might be a little bit of issue of concentricity. Sometimes I have to go back with the 45 to get it. I'll go over here real quick and take a measurement tool. Which is just a caliper. And we'll measure the width of that seat. Well, it's got to be touched a little bit more. It's just 27 thousandths. All right, so back off over here. All right, let's touch it again. That's going to pull it in exactly where it needs to be. As I depressed a little bit down and even the seat up a little bit, Looks like 50 thousandths is what we got for a seat with. That one's done. So, as you can see, the 45 is the easy part. The valve job is indeed the 60 and the 30, which takes all the time. You just have to be very careful touching that last little bit, barely letting it bump and touch it till you see the seat start to come in. Now, another good indicator is look at the stone. Notice how it's the same darkness all the way around. It don't matter where we turn it. That's telling you that the seat is round just by looking at your stone. If you got uh, black markings here and then on the other side it's gray, you know you're out of round, guess what you got to do? Go back with the 60 and 30 all over again. Alright, that's it for right now. Okay, and the final part, now the 45 is done, we re them the seats. And I'm going to put valve lapping compound on the 45 degree. Now all this is for, contrary to popular belief, is just to see where the seats are at. Just to see uh, how round they are, how true they are, if they got the same color. 
If there's any question of this, the real test is the seat runout dial gauge, which I have. And I'll go in there and put the runout dial on a couple of seats and see how true that the seat is in relationship to the 90 degree angle uh, of the valve guide. All right, we're ready to begin lapping, which uh, is a pretty straightforward operation. I got a pretty good lapping stick that uses pressure. Okay. And here we go. Spend just a few seconds buzzing it. We'll get back with this in just a little bit. 